Welcome to the Know Your Legacy podcast. I'm your host, Pippo Bassania, and today's guest is Cruz. Cruz is a conscious rapper that basically spreads the message of being awakened from the matrix and finding your inner enlightenment. For anyone who's listened to his music before knows that he truly makes music that feeds your soul. So Cruz, it's a pleasure having you on today, man. Thanks for being here. Uh, it's a pleasure being here, V. It's a pleasure being here. I appreciate you having me, brother. Uh, no problem at all. So um, listening to your music, obviously you talk about a wide variety of topics. And one, one thing that intrigued me about you was the story behind the music. And as you were saying as well, I think there's a, a lot more depth behind the surface level music that you make um, and the person that you are, you know, because you've evolved over time. So tell me a little bit about the, you know, the, the story leading up to you actually making music in the first place. Well, making music in the first place, meaning like when I first started. Yeah. Um, that definitely started for me when I was extremely young. I would have to say in terms of hip hop, I was six years old when I memorized my first hip hop song, which was Skankless Paradise by Coolio, you know, from the movie. And um, I think it was called Beautiful Minds, if I'm not mistaken. So I remember when I heard that song, you know, at that time, it was extremely popular. This was back in 1995. And, you know, I fell in love with it, man. All my older brother, my older cousins, they were all singing it, rapping it. Of course, they all loved it and whatever. So I naturally got influenced and I learned that song. And then when I was seven, I memorized my first R&B song, which was All My Life by KC and JoJo. And that made me fall in love with singing. So as a kid, I actually would tell my mother, you know, when I grow up, I want to be a famous singer. And she would just laugh, like, yeah, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But... I, honestly, I wanted to sing more than anything. I loved singing. But as I got older, I was just a lot, you know, I realized I was a lot better at rapping than I am at singing. So, stuck to rapping, you know. But, you know, growing up where I'm from now, I'm from Long Island, New York, born and raised. I moved to South Florida when I was in the middle of my junior year of high school. I was like almost 17 years old. So, where I'm from in Long Island is called Brentwood, which is, you know, a beautiful, awesome town in Long Island. However, it's filled with a lot of, you know, like gang violence and pretty hood you know what I'm saying so when you grow up in that environment you're kind of influenced by it and you know me growing up in a family full of boys I got nothing but cousins and three brothers an older brother I'm the second two little brothers and we're all like men literally within five to seven years from each other so I grew up in a huge family of straight guys you know a few girl cousins I mean sisters. the influence to the music really started occurring you know, like drastically for me, I think when I really started getting inspired and influenced to want to pursue it even more, I was nine years old. My cousin in London, her name is Lisa Roxanne, and she was like 12, and she had gotten signed after a talent show contest. You know, she's a singer. She sings very beautifully. She's very talented. And I remember she even performed like in Nickelodeon and stuff like that out there in England. But, um, you know, she was doing really good, man, and that really inspired me. I remember when I first found out I was still living in New York at the time I killed my other cousins, and we found out she got signed. I was like, wow, you know, that's amazing because, you know, we were like 9, 10, and she was 12, so it was a pretty dope thing to, you know, dope news to get. So then, like, fast forward two years. It's kind of a long story, so I apologize if I talk a lot, but fast forward two years. I was about 11. That's when I started really writing rhymes myself with a few of my cousins as well. We would start, you know, writing raps, stuff like that. But honestly, man, it wasn't really until I was about 14 years old that I really started realizing how much I liked rap. I was like, okay, so this is something I actually like to do. And mind you, you know, my entire life as a kid, I played soccer for like seven, eight years, you know, since I was five years old until I became a teenager. I had, I played at least three seasons of year straight soccer. That was my life. That was my passion. But as I got older and I became a teenager, I started realizing how much more I love music. So I kind of became lazy with soccer and I thought, you know, I let it go. And, you know, everything else that comes with puberty and stuff, you start hanging out more with girls and your friends and you're chilling and you get lazy. Like, you don't want to go stay after school till 6 p.m. practicing and running. You kind of want to just hang out and like music. So, unfortunately, that's one of my regrets in life of letting go of soccer because how much I loved it. Still love it to this day. But, um, yeah, man, so at 14, 15 years old was when I started actually recording myself for the first time in New York back then I was part of a little crew that me my cousin and a few of my homeboys created which was called JDK which is J-A-Y hyphen D-K and each letter was the first initial of our names so me being Kenny the K in JDK was for Kenny but I was you know since I was 15 I always went by Cruz so that's just always been my music name since jump you know from the beginning of this music career and then 2004 to 2005 which is when this was occurring 
And so obviously, you know, when you start, you know, being from Long Island, New York, bro, we were just influenced by hip hop. So you start talking about more hood shit and the experiences you've seen or you've been through. Everything I've ever written about and recorded, either I've done it myself or I've witnessed it or I've experienced being around it or, you know, I mean, my older cousins and my old brothers have done it, like I've seen it. So it's like, you know, in Brentwood, like I said earlier, it's, it's a lot of gang violence growing up. There was a lot of MS-13, Crips, Bloods, Nietas, Latin Kings. You know, I was exposed to all of that. And I had a lot of friends that were born into it or were around it. But me personally, I never was interested enough to join gangs myself. I've always respected it, but I never was into, you know, being a part of it. Because my gang was my family. Like I said, we're a bunch of men. So we always had so many people. And so, you know, so I started out rapping about, you know, more that kind of, uh, those kind of topics or whatever. Being more street hood and shit like that. So... It wasn't until, bro, until I was 18 years old, like I said, in the middle of my junior high school, I, you know, my mother moved me down to South Florida, and I became depressed naturally because uh, at that point in my life, everything was looking up that I felt, and I was listening to music, my voice, you know, it was kind of like, just stripped me away from an entire different life to a whole nother world, because now I'm down South, you know, and now I don't know anyone, and everybody down here at that time, to me, I was like, man, everybody has to weird accent and dress different and blah 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 like I was just very you know ignorant and young minded and immature like I looked at it like man fuck that you know I want to fuck with these Florida dudes I want to just be you know myself I don't want to deal with that blah 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 but like I was just very self-centered and very egotistical you know very lost in the illusion of separation you know but um fast forward when I turned 18 years old that's when all of this consciousness awakening and the kind of music that I write about today it all flowered from that point in 2007 in May of 2007, I was hospitalized for about four days. And what led up to it was, you know, at that time, I was smoking a lot of weed. I was doing a lot of dumb stuff. And, um, bro, I wasn't eating healthy at all. I was working out a lot. So I was really starting to get into, like, you know, working out daily with my cousin. And was doing really good. I was building muscle. At 18 years old, I was weighing about 150 pounds of solid muscle. So I was doing good for myself, but I was eating like shit. You know, I wasn't properly educated. So all I did, bro, was, you know, have fun, work out you know, smoke weed all day, hang out with people, and then late nights, bro, I would be, like, munching in the kitchen until, like, 3, 4 in the morning, and then going straight to sleep without letting my pro- uh, my body properly digest. So a culmination of doing that every single day for about a week or so eventually caught up to me, and it led to me having, like, an entanglement in my small intestine, which, honestly, I don't even remember what it was called. The doctor said it was called gastro or something. And um, apparently what it did was it caused like this weird vibration on the right side of my belly button and it caused me like shortness of breath. So it got to the point I told my mom, you know what, you know, I got to go to the hospital because it just feels weird. This is the normal. I can't really breathe or something's wrong, you know. So I went and I went in on a Friday weighing 150 pounds and I came out of the hospital four days later that Monday and I lost 22 pounds in four days. So I went from 150 to 128. So I literally lost all my, pro- you know, my progress at the gym. Um, I was looking like a skeleton. I felt mad skinny. I got depressed. I'm just like, damn, why the hell did this happen to me? Because you know, during those four days, I was strictly injected with IV. They wouldn't allow me to eat anything. Running a bunch of tests, and my like, that's you know, it's crap. So obviously, when I came out the hospital, they gave me a whole bunch of prescription drugs and all of this crap that I was always against since I was a kid. I've always been more of a natural healing and I've always been against pharmaceuticals because of the side effects and, you know, whatever. But, um, so my mother would fight with me every day to take these medicines and these pain meds or whatever, and I would never take them. So I was like, nah, I became desperate with researching how to naturally heal myself. And then for some reason, I remember at that point, you know, it occurred to me, I started thinking about meditation. I started thinking, you know, why do Hindus and Buddhists meditate? Like, what is meditation? What's the point of it? What are the benefits? How do you do it? Like, what is it? Why? So I started, like, asking these questions, and then I started researching online. I came across this website that said, you know, started explaining more about the practice of meditation. At that time, I thought it was simply something you would do, you know, to relax and to be stress-free, and that's it. But it's like, I can't, I was exposed to the fact that it's way more than that. You know, it's an actual journey within your own consciousness, within your own soul. And once you awaken yourself, there's literally no turning back. You feel me? So, you know, I, I became obsessed with the idea because I read something that said that, oh, the human body is capable of healing itself from virtually any sickness or disease simply by meditation. So obviously I became obsessed with that. I'm like, oh, wow, really? You know, and then I started researching more. And on YouTube, I came across this one hour long video. It is all 3D animated. And honestly, bro, it changed my life ever since I saw that movie or that video on YouTube. I became obsessed with the idea of meditation. I started practicing it instantly right then and there. 
So obviously, you know, growing up where I'm from, I was always very quick tempered kid. I had anger issues when I was younger. Um, very impatient, you know what I mean? And if you know much about astrology, my zodiac sign is Aries, and that's just kind of like in our makeup, I guess, you know, to be impulsive and nervousness energy and, you know, impatient as hell. So naturally, it was very difficult for me to meditate, you know? I didn't really know how to do diaphragmatic breathing and stuff like that, so I would get very, very extremely impatient. It would take me like 30 minutes to relax, you know? But I stayed consistent with it. Even though I kept falling asleep because my brain wasn't neurologically wired to handle that kind of breathing and stay awake, so my body would naturally fall asleep. Um, you know, a week later, being consistent every day for a week, it went from taking me 30 minutes to relaxing my mind to five minutes. And then like two weeks later, I was able to enter the meditative state in one minute instead of 30 minutes, you know? So, I, you know, just two weeks, man, it really, it was an amazing thing, bro. So I started realizing that this is an amazing experience. It just feels really good. My dreams started becoming more vivid. I started experiencing third eye activations, if you will while meditating you know i remember my very first third eye uh visual ever during the meditation was it was all black but i saw a purple heart manifest in the center of my field of vision and it was pulsating it was like a dark purple color that was the first experience i've ever had the first visualization i ever had for my pineal gland and i was obsessed you know so fast forward a month and a half later that's when i literally healed my own intestines in a month and a half of meditating almost Every single day, at least four or five days a week, right? I completely healed my own intestines, meaning I, could, I started being able to do whatever I wanted again. I was gaining weight again. I was working out again. And literally, bro, ever since then, it was much better back to me. So uh, naturally, I became obsessed with it. And I wanted to preach about meditation to everyone. Bro. Like, I was a believer. To me, I was the proof that I needed. Like, yo, I really healed myself with no drugs, no prescriptions, no medicine, nothing. Just the meditation in a month and a half. So all it takes is consistency, bro. And ever since then... Are you into meditation, by the way, V? Is that something I, you practice? I am, yes. Yeah, yeah, I am. Uh, I'm going to ask you about that in a minute. But yeah, carry on and uh, let, let's okay, see. Okay, cool, man. So you, you should know, you know, the more you meditate, you literally, you start to understand more the mechanics of reality. You understand the concept of energy, vibration, and frequency. So these kind of, you know, higher knowledge thinking started coming into my state of uh, being, into my consciousness. I naturally started increasing the frequency of my intelligence just through meditating every single day. And so naturally I became, you know, I started channeling, bro. When I started writing songs, I would begin channeling larger vocabulary words that I didn't even know what the hell they meant. I didn't know what the definition was. I would just start writing, you know, writing stuff. And then these words were coming to me and I would write them down with a particular sentence and I would look it up in the dictionary. Like, what does this word mean? And it would make perfect sense for what I'm talking about. And I'm like, bro, how the hell? Like I was starting to access higher knowledge without even knowing because yeah. I just wasn't there yet back then, you know? And it just changed my life to the point I was like, you know what? I cannot keep rapping about this ignorant bullshit about, you know, battle rapping, competition, diminishing other people. I'm the best rapper alive and trying to be the best. And all of these egoistic qualities of the mind, I started surpassing this and I started becoming more integrated and more aware of my true self and everyone around me, my connection to the earth, to nature, animals, humanity extraterrestrials, you want to take it that far, multidimensional beings, you know, interdimensional realities, all of these different experiences that I started, you know, acquiring just by meditating. Changed me, bro. And as you can tell, you know, if you've been to my website, in 2010, I was 21 years old. That's when I created my first project where it had to do with, like, consciousness, hip-hop, type of awakening, more intelligent rap, which I called the expansion. From that point forward, bro, fast forward now, it's been, what, 2018, it's been seven years. Not even, it's been eight years, bro, since the expansion. And I've already released like five or six more projects since then. My newest one that's about to be released now is called Fourth Entity, which is my EP. It's going to have about six tracks. But my last year, I released a mixtape called Killing the Kindness. And that actually did pretty well, too. So, I mean, it's, we're just growing, bro. Every day is a growing and learning thing, bro. I've got so many questions for you, man. I know you just, you just, uh, you know, said quite, a, covered quite a lot of interesting topics there. And just want to start with one thing in, in terms of meditation. You mentioned meditation. So for those people that are listening, I mean, meditation's blown up uh, as an industry as a whole and an, as an idea and a concept online and in terms of having um, coaches for meditation and a way, as, a way of healing and a way of life. What were you actually doing when you were meditating? Was there a specific process you were following? Were you visualizing something? Were you... Uh, feeling your body or the energy like talk me through that process like what was going through your mind 
Um, I right, so when I first started meditating, you know, this was 2007, 2008, 2018. Um, at the beginning, the best way for me to relax was I needed like an external sound to help me just quiet down my mind. So I would do a lot of guided meditations with just beats, with like really, whether it was binaural beats, frequency tones, or it was actually legit, just beautiful harmonic music. I was very, very calming, you know? So I would start like that. Like I would just listen to them. I created my own playlist on my old YouTube channel. And I would just have a playlist and I would just press play all and I would just let them all play. It would be like all together like an hour long, right? So I would just sit there in my bed, I would get comfortable, whatever, and I would start closing my eyes and I would just start breathing. And at this point, I didn't know anything about diaphragmatic breathing. By the way, it's a little windy. I don't know if you hear a lot of wind. Yeah, I can, yeah. Uh, can you still hear me good? Yeah, I can, yeah, yeah. If you just put your mouth right. closer to the microphone. And... Yeah, my bad. Yeah, cool. Right, so, okay. um, so, yeah, bro. So I started, um, I forgot what I was saying. Um, shit. <laughs> So yeah, but I started with oh, the, uh, meditating, the binaural beats, the, yeah. the music, and I would just close my eyes and breathe. You know, I feel like I naturally came across diaphragmatic breathing because I noticed I kind of just taught myself how to do it without even realizing what it was. Because I, I noticed that out of nowhere, I started breathing a different way and it just sounded louder and it was deeper and I could have a larger intake of oxygen. I was like, oh shit, you know, this feels amazing and it sounds like an ocean wave. Time. You know, when you breathe deep through your diaphragm, it literally sounds very similar to ocean waves. So that was the key for me. I was like, wait, so if I just start focusing more on this sound, I realized that my thoughts became less and less dense and I would start becoming more thoughtless. So I was like, yo, this is beautiful, you know? So I started doing it more and more. And eventually, you know, a month and a half later, bro, I was sitting in meditative states for an hour and a half at a time. Damn. Wow. So that's meaning my physical body was not breathing it was just taking an abundant intake of cosmic energy flow for an hour and a half straight and i would do this every single day and at that time i was going to school and college right after school i'd have like the house to myself for like four or five hours so i would just sit there in complete dead silence you know i got to the point i didn't even need the music anymore i really love meditating the most in silence i don't do visualizations i don't do you know mantras or chants or any of that i literally just close my eyes breathe through my diaphragm, listen to my breathing, and I get to the point that my breathing gets quieter, quieter, slower, slower, to the point that I physically stop breathing. Now, when you enter the meditative state, if you've ever experienced it, the first thing you see is like this white flash in the center of your eyebrows, indicating you've entered the meditative state. At that point, you physically feel the flow of cosmic energy flowing through your physical body from the top of the crown to the entire, you know, your entire physical body. So I got to the point that I became used to this feeling. So I started playing with it, and then fast forward uh, a year or two, I had my first astral projection, which changed my whole life, bro, because, you know, coming outside of your body, you know, and you, the sensations that you feel, seeing your physical body out, you know, you see your own self sitting there with his eyes closed. It just, and mind you, I'm like 19 years old, you know, nobody that I knew that I grew up with was on this. Everybody would think I was crazy, you feel me? So I'm like, damn, what the hell is going on, bro? I just started coming across a lot of ancient, stuff that I guess at that time I, I shouldn't have been coming across but obviously it was for a purpose and I've always knew I had a huge purpose for this planet to affect the collective mass in a positive way to empower everyone to remind everyone their true potential that they're amazing that they're miraculous that we are all God experiencing ourselves subjectively we're all one we're all aspects of each other you got to love everyone you know because what you put out is what you bring back so bro it's been an amazing journey and I'm extremely grateful and feel blessed to have created what I have created thus far and it's just the beginning bro so a lot of things are going to start manifesting for us in the near future over at Pantheon Elite Records we're making some pretty big moves man it's just a matter of time you know oh, I'm looking forward to hearing it all man I'm looking forward to it I mean uh, a lot of questions again come up from everything that you're saying I think in, in one of your songs because you mentioned um, you know we are all one dimensional beings as well um, just a few minutes ago and in one I think it was in um, different reactions you said I'm um, 28 but I'm ancient. So I, I completely understand what you're saying there, but I want to hear it from you and for, for, for the benefit of the listeners. What does that mean? Why did you say that? I said 28, but I'm ancient, which actually I just turned 29 yesterday. It was my birthday yesterday. So now I'm 29, but 28 meaning, you know, I've been existing on this planet revolving around the sun for 28 cycles, right? When I wrote that, those lyrics. Now I understand I am a 29 year old being, quote unquote, 29. But the true essence of my being, which is this eternal consciousness, which is infinite, it is infinite. 
so I'm ancient. Like, my true self is ancient. Not just me, though. Everyone. Even you, V. Everyone. Everyone. Everyone that's watching this. Everyone that's listening. Anyone who will never see this. We are all infinite beings of light. You know what I'm saying? That's just the true fundamental core of your essence. That's what you are. You are what is encompassing this avatar, this human body. And we animate the human body through our consciousness. So like the light projector, right, from the movie. And so that's what I mean by 28, but I'm ancient. I've been existing ever since existence has came to fruition. Meaning I've been existing ever since existence came to fruition. It, it, you know, you and I'm sure you know at this point, you know, time is nonlinear. True time is nonlinear. There's no such thing as a beginning or an end. Only in this dimension of room we exist with them. But all is now, all is occurring now in parallel with reality, this infinite reality. So any experience you've ever had, any experience you will ever have, any future life you will ever have after this, and any life, past life you had before this, it is all occurring right now. There's no such thing as it's going to occur tomorrow. You're just shifting to parallel realities per second, every single moment of every single second. But you're, rec you're recreating the same reality, which is why it looks like nothing's changing. You're still in the same room, right? Everything looks the same. But you're literally manifesting automatically. There's no such thing as learning how to manifest. You are already manifesting. It's all about learning how to consciously I mean, it's about consciously being aware of what you're manifesting, then taking control of that. Now you're thus consciously creating what you want to experience, and that's it, bro. At this point, you become the true creator of your own reality through the laws of attractions, emotions, you know, passion, acting on your passion, and the belief system that you're creating for yourself. That's what's manifesting your physical reality. So, man, it's, it's a beautiful thing, bro. It feels good to be alive. I mean, look behind me. You know, this is earth this is mother gaia you know look how gorgeous it is bro it's the blue and green energy is everywhere it's it is it is asleep it you know it definitely does look beautiful and and the thing is the thing you mentioned earlier about accessing higher higher levels of knowledge i i experienced exactly the same thing and i did had no idea what was happening man this so this was when i was at university this was about four about five years ago now nearly and i was living with a friend and and he was talking about um, destiny and you know asking the bigger questions about life and what you know what is science really and you know all those sorts of things and I in conversation we started talking about so many philosophical concepts about the universe and about oneness and I was just thinking like where is all this knowledge coming from like I had not read or heard or listened to anything up to that point because I felt that I was too busy sort of partying and drinking, et cetera, et cetera. And then mm -hmm. I started having these conversations and I thought, wow, like where is this knowledge coming from? I'm just naturally flowing out with these topics of conversation. And that just urged me to read more and more and more. And then I read yeah. The Alch Alchemist. Have you read The Alchemist? Paulo Coelho? I did. My cousin bought it for me and sent it to me from New York. Um, my wife and I both read it, you know. Amazing book, bro. Amazing book. I really loved it. It, it is, yeah. Um, and I, I, yeah, go on. No, go on. Oh, no, I was just going to say, I actually have to reread it, if anything, because I only read it once. And I know a lot of people yeah. have read it a few times, and they just say it's an amazing book. So if anything, it, I should definitely reread it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, The Alchemist is amazing. It, it is, yeah. And I've read it five times up to this point, and I still get amazed by the, the, wow. the, message, yeah. the, the nice. message that's in there. Because you, I think when you become aware of, of the concepts yeah. in there um, and wow. reflect, re use that as a reflection in your own life, you can understand what he means by good and bad omens and the signs yeah. that... that god is giving you because in the story he, he comes across multiple characters like an old man and a, a, a woman and a shop owner etc etc and these people are they're not they're not the old man they're not the woman they're not the shop owner they are manifestations of god almost as you were saying you know just just mm -hmm. wearing different costumes and you're being guided along the way so he's being guided to realize his dream along the way so all these people that he meets are there to to uh, guide him to where he needs to go and I think when you become aware of the fact that that is how your life works you know you you have the universe working for you not against you you start to work in a completely different way and you start to take control of your thoughts you start to take control of your belief system and the things you think about all day long because that mm -hmm. essentially affects affects you so um, I'm curious to know in terms of um, you know your mentality as it is now how have your beliefs changed compared to, you know, like five or 10 years ago? Oh my God. Well, my belief systems, I have consciously created new ones. I replaced my old ones that I noticed I acquired through either experiences or influence or I was projected from other people and I kind of clinged onto their belief systems and made it my own, even though they didn't resonate with who I truly was. And so they were out of alignment with my true self and it would manifest as a lot of, you know, bullshit and 
persistence and pain and suffering. You know what I'm saying? That's all because I had the wrong belief systems. So, I mean, the last five, ten years, bro, I've changed from negative thinking and negative affirmations to more integrative, positive, and positive affirmations. You feel me? So, I just changed the way I speak. I realized that the two words, I am, are the most powerful words in this dimension because what you say after those two words creates your reality. And there's a meme out there about that, which is a beautiful meme. Um, but it's very true, bro. If you say I am sick, you're going to manifest and you start projecting these energies of creating yourself to be sick, you know what I'm saying? Or attracting yourself to eat something that's going to make you sick. Oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. You know, earlier, I actually took my oldest son to his Kung Fu practice and there was this one kid there that's like on level four. My son just started, he's level one. But the kid's on level four, he's nice. He's really good at Kung Fu. But when I hear the kid, everything he says is a negative affirmation. Oh, I can't do it. Oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. He's cocky as hell. He's good, but he doesn't have the right mental uh, positive affirmations to tell himself. So that way he can become even more great than what he already is. He just keeps telling himself, I can't do this, man. Oh, I can't do that. He'll just choke it off. So he kept kicking wrong or something. But his, I just studied him. I'm like, damn, this kid is amazing. He has potential, but he needs to, his parents or someone needs to change his belief systems about himself, his vocabulary, the way he speaks himself. He needs to love himself more. And that's one thing, bro, like, you know, that's a perfect example for all of us adults in everyday life. We got, we got to love ourselves first, bro. A lot of us don't love ourselves, and that's why it manifests as pain. We keep projecting our love to someone else, and we want to find love to other people externally, not realizing we first need to love internally. You know, the internal reality is the primary reality. Everything external is secondary. People don't understand that, bro. That's why me and Pantheon and Lee and everyone else that's that wants to collaborate with us or ever makes music with us in the future. It's all about empowering the people. If you're not about empowering the people, I don't want to collaborate with you. That's just what it is. You know, because it's, it's enough of this bullshit competition, bro. I'm, I'm done with this. You know? I let go of that when I was like 19, 20, 21. I said, you know what? I'm done with this. I was all about it. I was all about being the best and you know, talking shit about people and coming up with cool, slick ways to punch lines and clever ways to diminish another human. I'm like, bro, it's just so ridiculous at this point to me, personally. I'm not trying to, you know, dumb down anyone's way of life. That's just different levels of awarenesses that people are still existing, you know? And the large majority of the mass media, in my personal opinion, as you can see where society is still heading, a lot of people are still into that, you know? You can see what's popping right now in the mainstream. And it's just yeah. a lot of unconscious foolery, to be honest. Yeah, um, I, I completely agree with you. And you know, one thing I've realized as well is that when you, it, this is hard to put into practice, but what I realize is one, everyone is talking from their level of awareness, you know? So the mm -hmm. fact that someone doesn't agree with you on a certain topic or a certain area of life, it doesn't mean that they're a bad person or that you should hate them. They're just, they are just talking from their experiences leading up, leading them up to that point. And maybe if you had the same experience of life that they've had, you may say the same thing. So you can't, you can't judge someone based on that. And the second thing, what you were saying about not collaborating with anyone that's not about empowering the people i'm the same way because i look at the world as if it is just another reflection of me so 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 everyone is literally just wearing a different costume of god almost you know like it's so if you hate someone you're literally hating yourself because yeah. you, you're made of the same stuff like it's 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 no different so it, it's, diff it's difficult to put that into practice when you have people who, who are jealous of you or trying to uh, sort of give you negative energy. But it, there's a way to handle that. And if you handle it with love, as you were saying, it will completely change the way that you, you know, handle relationships in all aspects of your life. So uh, I, I agree with you totally on that, man. No, I appreciate it, man. Definitely. I know you know your stuff, so I can tell. Yeah. yeah. Usually I just need to start talking to somebody. I love it when I'm around your presence physically, or I listen to you like this, because now I can sense your energy like you read, dude. You know, I can read people very easily. You know, if you come very yeah. empathic and the emotional intelligence, you know, the observations on it. All I got to do is talk to you for a little bit, and I can already tell what level uh, of awareness you're vibrating within, what piece, how much knowledge you can take and how much you can't take, what I can't say and what I can't say around you. When it comes you know, to I, meeting people physically, it's what I prefer, because then I can sense that person's presence and energy, their level of awareness, you know, what I can say, what I can't say around them, what they can and what they cannot handle, whether they're genuine people or not, whether they're lying to me in my eyes or not, all of that, I can sense it and know. I know if someone likes you in my face. Even if I don't make it apparent to you that I know to not make you uncomfortable, 
just know that I know you're lying to me. <laughs> I'm just connected to people. You know, I love people. I love everyone, all races, genders. You know, it doesn't matter. The sexual orientation doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your belief system is, if you're atheist. Or even if you hate me and you think I'm whack or whatever, yeah, I really don't give a shit. You know, I still love you unconditionally, and I want to empower you and help you understand your connection to me so that we can come together and co-create an amazing reality on this planet. You know, it's time, bro. I feel like it's already time for this, man. It's time to let go of all these bullshit that keeps occurring, all these world events, all these false flags, which are still real people dying, but they are false flags. It's, it is intelligently organized, but it's real. People are losing their lives, but I feel like it's ridiculous. It, just, it needs to stop. And it's not going to stop until the people are empowered and educated and are informed that, bro, we are all one. You know, love yourself. Love everyone. Stop beefing, bro. This is so stupid to me. Bro. Yeah. I think when, we, when, when people like you and me um, have that level of awareness, and uh, we've got many more levels to go, I'm sure, but I think when we come, come to a point where we do have this perspective on life, I think it's, mm. it's good to try and empower others to help them raise their level of awareness. Because not every, because you may be that person that, you know, puts out that music, puts out that, that song, and just one person has to hear that, and that, that can be the catalyst for them to think, wow, shit, yeah. what he's talking about is serious. Let me, let me rewind that. Let me listen to that. Or let me look into that further. Let me research that. What's he talking about? And, that, you know, just as the, the Alchemist was the catalyst for me, you know, one of your songs can be the catalyst for someone else. And so, um, as you said, it, it, it's, it's just about co-creating a, a reality and helping other people realize that they can Absolutely. do the same thing. They can do the same yeah. thing. Very true. That's what it is. So someone, like the reason I wanted to speak to you, you know, you're from everything you've said, you know, you, your mind is very, is very interesting. You know, the thoughts and the, the ideas that you have right now. So I'm, I'm curious to know what fascinates you right now. What Could fascinates me? Yeah. Like what are the big questions you're asking yourself? Right now, my current fascination is with ancient civilization. Everything that has to do with ancient Egypt, Sumeria, you know, the Anunnaki's, if you get into that stuff. Zachariah Sitchin's work, you know, I'm very into David Wilcox's work, stuff with the, you know, Gaia, the Gaia Network. Listen, if you don't have the Gaia Network or you've never heard of the Gaia Network, I highly suggest you download it and become subscribed ASAP because that is Disclosure right there. That's the Netflix version of Disclosure. High quality amazing people you know high level whistleblowers beautiful bro it's just, just like netflix man you gotta subscribe pay monthly but it's worth it because the information and the knowledge you can acquire at gaia is amazing you know my manager who is forbidden knowledge a very close friend of mine as well he's also one of the ceos of the record label for pantheon Lee record he's an ambassador of the guy that works he's a host on a couple of shows there so he's pretty rooted in that company and i can tell you man firsthand experience that is an amazing thing and i've been following I've been a subscriber to it for a couple of years now, and I can say, bro, the information there is amazing. Definitely get into it. If you're not anyone watching it, go to Gaia.com, G-A-I-A. -A. Uh, I'm not being paid to say any of this, by the way. This is just because I passionately feel about it. You know, so it's a dope-ass network, and I feel like people, more people need to be aware of it. Um, and, yeah, bro, uh, what the hell else are we talking about? <laughs> uh, <laughs> the things that fascinate um, you. So the, you're talking about the ancient civilization. Ancient civilization, yeah. That's yeah. my biggest fascination right now because, obviously, if you want to understand who you are today and who you're about to become tomorrow, you need to understand your origins, your true history, not the history they teach us in the educational school systems in America, especially it's the biggest bullshit of the world, but um, the true history of the earth and humanity and our origins and how we came here why we're here, where we're going, where did we come from? All of these huge questions that have been baffling humanity for millennia that no one seems to understand. Well, it's not like that anymore. It's 2018, and a lot of us understand. A lot of us know what it is. We know why we're here, where we're going, where we came from, and it has a lot to do with the Anunnaki's. And so that's something I suggest people start researching more into, reading, you know, get into the Zachariah Sitz and stuff. Read about the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, you know, the Tablets of Destiny, um, the Enuma Elish, there's so much information out there, bro, that can really spark conversation and interest and questioning within your consciousness. that you're going to be like, wow, man, I've been living a lie my whole life. Everything, you got to now unlearn everything you learn, you know? And that's why I do music, bro. I'm just, you know, blessed to be inclined musically and be able to express this knowledge in a way where it's still kind of urban and still like a hip hop style. But I'm bringing knowledge and awareness and power. Man. I'm not here to diminish you. I'm not here to talk shit about you or beef with you, even if you keep trying to get a response out of me, 
understand that I understand better. You feel me? I am never afraid of anybody. I don't fear any human being because I am every human being. You know what I mean? So, so it's like, bro, what the hell can you really say to me? You can't discredit me because how are you going to discredit love? Love is the ultimate highest frequency of intelligence within all of creation itself. How do you discredit love? You cannot. And my vibration is love. You know, I choose to be of love and I choose to spread love and awareness, which is wisdom, knowledge, light, and information, right? So come on, bro. I feel like the world is going to change and we're going to make it happen. All of us, you, me, yeah. and everyone, and all of this huge community we are all a part of, we're making it happen, bro. We are the indigo children. We are these crystal children, the light workers, Darcy, whatever you want to call it. There are different labels for the same thing. We are higher dimensional beings who incarnated into this earth at this time to assist in the awakening of humanity. That's how we are all here, you know? Yeah. And we're here by the millions, bro. And we're just finding ourselves through this beautiful social media platform and the internet. We're all finding each other. We're networking. We're communicating. We're remembering each other again. And it's amazing, bro. I feel blessed, you know? I feel blessed. And I appreciate you reaching out to me to do this interview. It's pretty dope. I like it. Yeah, no, definitely. I like it as well. And I think the, the whole concept of, of what I'm doing here is having fascinating conversations with legends in the making. That's, mm. that's, how, I, that's how I phrase it. And it, and, it, and it literally is. You know, I look at people's work like yourself. Um, you know, you do music like many others. But what caught me about, you know, what caught my attention was the lyrics. You know, I don't, I don't listen to music just for music's sake anymore. I listen to it for the, the message behind the artist. And your message is powerful. And I was resonating with everything you're saying because... Some of the stuff that you say, I think pe only people who are on a certain conscious vibration will understand and connect and think, yeah. I know yeah. what he's talking about, man. So, yeah, that's, that's what urged me to look into your story further. And I so. get people, man. I get even people within my own family that tell me, you know, everything's saying it's dope, but, bro, you got to start saying things that people will understand. You know, I get, I get that feedback every now and then. Like, you know, not everyone's going to understand what you're saying, but I'm like, yeah, but, bro, to me, that is the point. The point is for you to hear be like, damn, the flow is dope, the lyrics sound cool. I don't know what the fuck he's saying, but it sounds cool. Well, the point is for you to search the lyrics, to research what I'm saying, for you to stop being lazy and put in the work to create. You feel me? To research what I'm saying. That is the point. The point is not for me to appeal to the media and the masses on what sells right now. Like, I can care less about the money and the sales. To me, it's just about the knowledge and the empowerment. Do you understand who you are? Do you understand your connection to me? Do you understand why you are here? What your purpose is? You're gonna die yeah. without the purpose. You feel me? Yeah. It's like not. Nah, I'm yeah. not here. For, I'm here to empower, bro. So that's so why I'm like, I don't care if I'm not making music that's for the radio. I'm making music that feels good to me and that I know is going to empower people when they when they re memorize my lyrics. I am speaking from either first person perspective or third person perspective. If I speak from a first person perspective, it's not because I'm overly confident or cocky or saying oh, I'm this amazing spiritual being, whatever. No, I'm doing it from a first person perspective so that when you memorize my lyrics, you're empowering yourself by mm. repeating what I'm saying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't yeah. just do it for me. Everything I do is cleverly done. I do it all on the subconscious level for people, you know? And it's just planting little seeds of consciousness in their subconscious mind. If they don't understand the lyrics, well, guess what? I just plant the sign into your subconscious. connect dots you know that's like everything is just divinely orchestrated man and to me it's all about to make love make music that makes you feel good that you love and that people resonate everyone has an audience waiting for them i'm starting yeah. to attract my audience now which is great you know, i've been doing this for so many years so finally now it's manifesting at more mass scale you know so yeah. it's, really, it's really accelerating yeah and i feel very grateful bro and very humble you know what i'm saying regardless of what happens from here on forward very humble very grateful very blessed yeah i think you know what if you keep doing what you're doing i think eventually the world catches up to you and you, you the world will come to you at the right time you know so even mm -hmm. as you're saying people don't understand your lyrics but those who do understand right now will be attracted to you immediately attracted to your music and attracted to you as a personality just like i did you know but if i'd met you five years ago your maybe your lyrics weren't ready for me to listen to and my uh, my vibration my vibration wouldn't have been ready to understand what yep. you were saying anyway. Yeah. So, it, as you were saying, it's all divinely orchestrated. And I truly believe that, that you meet people and meet, and certain things happen at the, at the right time. Because yeah. that, that person that you meet, if you met them any earlier, they not, may not have been in the right place in their life to actually provide you value. And by 
vice versa. So it, it's yeah, it, it just goes beyond beyond our minds. But the way it works, it's all been planned out. You know, before we even got here, I think. So yeah, and I, just just going back a little bit to to one of the conversations we had uh, slightly earlier about the ancient civilization. This is something that's fascinated me for a long time. I don't, some of the stuff you were saying, I haven't looked into as deeply because I didn't understand some of it, but I, it's definitely something that plays on my mind because I know, for example, things like, you know, something as basic as, no, I wouldn't say basic, actually, one of the most popular topics is the pyramids, right? People are still baffled as to how they were built and how they were created. And I'm just like, you know, I, I still think about it and think, you know, shit, they didn't have half the technology we have now. How did they manage to build something as strong and big? And I, yeah. I, I saw it years ago. I went to Egypt, went to Cairo, and I saw it. But uh, I was just awesome. standing there in awe. That's amazing. I'm dying, bro, dying to go to Egypt. I can't wait till I can see the Sphinx and, you know, the pyramids and just all the other amazing monuments that are around that area. That's going to be amazing. I'm definitely going very soon. As soon as the universe makes it happen for me, I'll be there. Yeah. You know what the annoying thing is for me, though, is I went there before I feel like I was consciously awake. So I didn't appreciate it as much. So I was yeah. there, I was like, oh, I'm here for a day, you know, just seeing another, another famous, uh, like a famous... Uh, Monument. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then now when I look back, I think, oh, man, if I went there with the, with the appreciation that I have now and the curiosity I have now, I'd be standing there for hours just thinking about, you know, this was two, three, four thousand years ago. Like, how, you know, what were people doing at this point in time, you know? Man, I feel like we are right now in the age of rediscovery. That's why the ancient civilizations are much more advanced and intelligent than we are right now, because we fell collectively in consciousness, and, you know, from the fall of Atlantis. If you get really deep into the whole big flood and everything that happened, the Sumerians being wiped out or whatever, you know what I'm saying? We had to start civilization all over again with Sumeria. And I won't go too deep into it, it's a very, very long story, but that goes to, that's why we have stuff like the wheel different inventions we still use to this day that they used in Sumeria 5,000 years ago or 5,000 plus years ago. It's like, what the hell? Like, we still can't even create the Great Pyramids. It's 2018. So yeah. how the hell did they do that all these thousands of years ago? That goes to show you we were just way more advanced than civilization. We had galactic capabilities. You know what I'm saying? We had all of these amazing abilities. and we just, well, It's a long story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I can yeah, no, I can imagine. But, but yeah, so, so I'll, I want to wrap this up with three questions that I, I ask everyone. I'm interested to see what you'd say. So right, let's do it. the first one being, if you were to go back to your 18 year old self with, with all the knowledge and information you've got now, what would you tell him if you were to tell him anything? To trust the process and that everything is literally happening for a reason. I hate that because you hear that all the time. Oh, it's happening for a reason. Do you really understand? It? So I'd be like, yo, Trust the process. I know it sucks that you lost all this weight. I know it sucks you were hospitalized. I know it sucks you were stripped away from where you're from because now you're in South Florida and you're pretty much depressed. But it's all for purpose. I feel like the universe did that to me so that I could be stripped away from my old self. Forced. Like I was literally forced. I, I came down to Florida to the screen. I didn't want to move here. You know? I was forced to come down here. The universe told me, like, no, you've already experienced enough dysfunction. It is time for you to awaken and experience the light. You know, so you got a big purpose on this planet for a lot of people. So like, that's why I was stripped. I experienced all this dysfunction. And now I'm here in South Florida, you know, the sunshine state. You know, what is uh, synchronicity in that or the coincidence? The sunshine state and it's all light and it's beautiful. I got amazing sunsets here every day. I've grown to appreciate Florida the older I got. I really hated it when I first moved here because I was just being ignorant. And, you know, just to myself, I don't want to be here. So I was very stupid and naive, but... Man, that's what I would tell myself if I was younger. Bro. Just trust the process, be of love, and understand that 10, 11 years from now, you're really going to start making moves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So just, just before I get into the second question, I mean, I, I completely resonate with what you're saying about be, you know, feeling like you're completely stripped away to start again. And a similar things happened to me. And I've said this on the podcast many times to, to other guests before, is that about five or six years ago, I went through a really bad skin disorder and I, I lost lots of weight. There was no cure for it. Went to doctors. They, you know, they gave me steroids and stuff like that. And it was just, it was very, very painful, basically. And I felt like it got to a point where I, I now that I've had time to reflect on it over what's happened the last few years, I feel like the boy in me was stripped away. To, to reveal the man that I was now becoming, you know, that because I, I see things, 
I, I see things in a, in a metaphorical sense. And that's why I understand, you know, what you're saying about being stripped away. Cause it's literally like the old you, the old mindset, the old energy was all gone. So you could be reborn into the, into cruise basically, you know? Man, right. <laughs> yeah. <Very> much. <laughs> but yeah. So, uh, yeah, exactly. But yeah. So the second question, um, is if you could write anything for three generations from now to read, so you know you've got children already, but their children's children to read any message that you could write down, what would it be? Any message? Um, it would be the true origin and the potential of the human being, the purpose of the human being, so that the newer generations who are incarnating into this planet three generations from now have a guide from the beginning of their incarnation. You see what I'm saying? So just to, honestly, I would just leave behind a guide, a guide of how to become your true potential, who you truly are, because once you incarnate into this earth, you go to a state of amnesia and you forget your true origin, you forget your true potential, you forget your connection to the divine cosmos itself. So I would just leave back that, man, just like a manual, like a guide, you know what I'm saying? Like, look, 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 look. you started life, started right away, you know what I mean? You started like right away with this awareness of your true power. You're not getting your power away, you're just keeping your power from the beginning. You will have an amazing, amazing civilization at that point. You know what I'm saying? So I would leave behind that, bro, just a guide to be who you truly are and remind them who you truly are you know, to help people understand their true essence. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's my that, main concern. That's powerful. That's powerful, man. Like, I, if you ever write that, let me know. I'd love to read it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm doing it through the music. So. Yeah, exactly. So the, the last and final question. Cruise is 90 years old. You're looking back at your life. What's the legacy you want to leave behind? Cruise is 19, you said? N 90. 90? Yeah. Oh, man. Um, I want to leave behind the fact that my record label and I, my team and I, which are very amazing other young guys themselves, we did something to shake up this world. We changed the music industry in the sense that we set a higher standard for hip-hop music. Where now... If you really want to be dope, what the fuck are you saying? What is your intelligence? Where's your knowledge at? What do you know? What can you say that's going to help me uplift my vibration and empower me? You feel me? Like, that's the new standard I want to set for hip-hop. Like, yo, you're going to spit hip-hop, you're going to spit real rap lyrics, flows. I mean, listen, the whole turn-up hip-hop is dope, too. I'm not shitting on it. But it's a different energy. It's not to uplift humanity in the sense of empowering them and keeping them informed and educated. It's more like just a party, drink, or whatever, you know, just honestly, not even the shit on it, but it's just lower vibrational activities. The whole getting drunk and high and sex and parties and drugs and all of this shit, that's just lower vibrational activities. You're just escaping reality, but it's fun. You feel me? Like, I can't sit here and be like, yo, judge and condemn these people because they're doing it. It's like, I understand it. I went through it. I lived it. I know it's fun and it's a very, very hard cycle to break out of, but that is not why we are here. We're not here to have fun in those ways. We are here to have fun by uplifting the earth into fourth density. And when you come into fourth density, we operate collectively at, from a planetary consciousness perspective. So there's no more such thing as kidnaps and rapes and murders and it's you know, anything is, you know, laws and money and all this bullshit. Like, bro, I'm here to change the reality. I'm not here to have fun and go clubbing and all this shit. I'm here to change the earth. You know what I mean? That's why. I, that's what I want to do, bro. 90 years old, that's the legacy I'm going to leave behind. The fact that I was able to be one of the pioneers at the forefront of this shit to really change the world in the sense of, wow, you know, we got to start, we got to step our game up. We got to start reading these books, man. We got to read this tablets. We got to understand our true history. So that I can start rapping about this kind of shit. You know, I want rappers to get inspired in that way. And that is what I'm determined to create. And that's why I'm here. So let's see how it manifests, you know. I'm 29 now. So what is that? 61 more years or 71? Yeah, I think 61, right? I'm bugging out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's, that, that's fucking fire yeah, right there, man. I can, I, can, I can feel your energy already through, through this conversation and through your your answer so i'm looking forward to seeing where you go in the future and, and thank you so much for for taking the time to speak today cruz man it's been I appreciate amazing you, buddy. thank you man you already know bro you can get an interview for me anytime i love your energy brother appreciate you thank you for reaching out